Hello everyone, happy Black History Month. Welcome to season five of On the Avenue. If you haven't heard already, my name is Amber and I will be your host this season. One church announcement before we get started. We have our Black History concert happening this month. Houston Grand Opera, Prairie View A&M University, and Texas Southern University are joining the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church Mass Choir to put on a musical celebration for us. Make sure you are here February 24th at 7 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Okay, now we can kick off the season. I'm excited to share this episode with you today. Well, I'm always excited to share with you, but this Black History Month, we wanted to focus on our progression. So with that in mind, we decided to reach out to a few people to discuss the development within our communities, like what is working for us, what is working against us, and what we as individuals can do to maintain that progression. First up, we have the Social Justice Ministry. I sat down with two leaders of that ministry here at Wheeler Avenue, and we spoke a little bit about the work they've done at the church and around the community. Let's take a look into that conversation. Okay, everyone, I have some very special guests here with me today, the leaders of the social justice ministry here at Wheeler Avenue. I have to my left, Reverend Dr. Angela Raven Anderson, and to her left, I have Reverend Don Odom Jr. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. How are you? Thank you, thank you for having us. Of course, of course. Great. Okay, so I'm ready to learn all about the social justice ministry here, because I actually don't have that much knowledge on it. Mm -hmm. So that's why you guys are here today. So tell me all about it. What is the mission of this ministry? So I, I, going back to the history of this church, mm -hmm. right? Our DNA, um, we've always had a social justice ministry. Right. Uh, our founding pastor emeritus, um, Pastor Lawson was a social justice warrior mm -hmm. and advocate. This church um, was formed across the street from Texas Southern University mm -hmm. at a time, you know, when civil rights was the, the order of the day. Mm -hmm. And so in 2020, when we reactivated, it was not a new ministry. It wasn't, you know, something that we were starting from scratch. We were reactivating something that's always um, been here. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think Angela can speak to the structure of mm -hmm. how we developed the ministry. Okay. But to give you background, we... Um, in, in June of 2020, on right. the other side of George Floyd, mm -hmm. um, there was church leadership, and this mm -hmm. came from from Reverend from from Reverend AJ and mm -hmm. and, uh, and Pastor Cosby. They wanted to reactivate the social justice ministry. There was an attempt that had been made before, but Harvey derailed it. Okay. In 2017. Okay. But this time around, it was you know we we need to do it and we need to do it now, and um, and so we formed the ministry, and then almost immediately pressed into uh, election mode, right? So we <laughs> yeah. were up against, you know, such a critical election at that time. Yeah. But the formation of it was in the the air of protest yeah. with mm -hmm. George Crucible. Floyd. Mm -hmm. um, and so it gave us an opportunity and some headwind. Um, and it, it pulled a lot of people into the process early right. on mm -hmm. for a new ministry. We had a really good... Uh, following, so there were a lot of things that went right for us to to start our foundation, um, yeah. and then Angela has background in organizing, um, and she came up with a really good model for the ministry okay. to to break out into smaller parts. If you want to speak about that, well, you asked the the mission right. of. Uh, our social justice ministry. So, of course, uh, as Don indicated, the the reactivation of this ministry was birthed in the in the heat of I always call mm -hmm. this that summer the activities that were going on, and then leading into again such a crucial election point. But as we came together to look at um, not only what George Floyd indicated for us, right, that there were issues that we were seeing within our criminal justice system, issues that we were seeing in our political system. Mm. Um, one of the things that we began uh, as a group to say that we wanted to focus on was how do we go about dismantling systemic injustices, mm. those things that are baked into the policies and the procedures that impact every single aspect of lives of people mm. uh, all across, whether it be education, uh, health care, uh, finances, economics, any of those okay. areas you can see 
um, systemic injustices occur. So our focus, because we're planted in the third ward, is really looking at how do we begin to dismantle those systems as they are affecting the people within our communities and those of oppressed communities um, with, within this greater Houston area. Mm-hmm. And um, to that, we focus primarily in five areas, okay. uh, again, because we see systemic injustice in everything. So we had to really kind of whittle down on the places where we wanted to put our emphasis Okay. So our strategic focus is in the area of uh, criminal justice reform, okay. um, educational excellence or mm-hmm. education reform, we say, um, community resource development, mm-hmm. which right now is, has a huge focus on health care disparities and food insecurities in the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, we look at voter engagement. Okay. Uh, and that's where you've seen us be very active in doing voter registration drives, mm-hmm. having workshops on voter education, all those kind of type uh, types of activities. And then finally, our legislative reform um, subcommittee, which works very closely with our legislators and the legislative process, keeping an eye on what's going on both in at the state level as well as at the federal level as mm-hmm. far as legislation that's being put forth or legislation that we think we should be supporting. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you spoke. Oh, did you have something to add to that? Well, I was just I was going to add that there was a, a key piece that Angela added um, when we look when we look at the root causes. We talk about advocating, educating, and elevating okay. a particular right. subject matter. To give an example, if it's something to do with, um, you know, justice in education, mm-hmm. you know, it's the people that can't advocate for themselves, right? And so we're there to advocate, and we're also there. Um, you know, to to educate someone so that they can be empowered. And so it's, that. you know, it's a it's a good it's a good model as opposed to just. Talking about the problem mm-hmm. or, as told, you know, just just being someone that speaks about it. Mm-hmm. It's actually a practical application um, of the ministry from a social justice ministry standpoint to get out and to tackle these root causes. So it's a good process. You spoke about, Reverend Angela, you spoke about dismantling some systems in Third Ward. Could you elaborate a little bit on that? What are the systems that you're seeing that need to be dismantled? And what are you doing to help that progression? Well, for instance, in our uh, education subcommittee, right now, one of the thoughts is how do we break up this pre-K to prison pipeline? Mm-hmm. And one aspect, because none of these things is a, is a single factor mm-hmm. uh, uh, problem or single issue problem, but one thing that we are looking at that contributes to uh, that the, de- the demise of students going down that pathway mm-hmm. has to do with literacy. Mm-hmm. Okay. So right now our subcommittee is working very closely with some uh, schools, uh, a couple of the elementary schools in implementing st- uh, different programs. Uh, Men Can Read, where we'll have uh, folks go in and read with the students at the school. Who are and, these folks? Uh, they're volunteers within okay. the ministry. Okay. Yes. Nice. That are be going. Takes a village. It does <laughs> take a village. It really does. And we're working together with Blackshear. We're going to be working okay. hopefully with Thompson and possibly Lockhart. But again, looking at what's going on in this neighborhood and how we can be of service mm-hmm. to help dismantle that injustice. Our um, our. Our community resource mm-hmm. development, That's what I was they to. have identified, um, we saw it especially during the pandemic, mm-hmm. the impact of diabetes may have on our, on, in our community okay. that is much higher than other demographics. Mm-hmm. So what they have done is they've initiated a program uh, partnering with the CDC. Mm-hmm. Uh, It's called Prevent T2, and it works to prevent type 2 diabetes. We have people within the ministry who've gone and become trained as lifestyle coaches. And they're working with a a cohort of uh, individuals to prevent uh, diabetes. And so they meet with this cohort of uh, people who are at risk Mm -hmm. uh, on a weekly basis, uh, providing them with training on things that have to do with uh, food, um, exercise, exercise uh, just understanding the disease itself, how to manage it, how to manage stress, mm-hmm. all of That's those big. things. Yeah, all of those things. So those are the ways that we try to um, look at, you know, it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, right? right? And so we begin to just look at the ways where we can um, begin to tackle and have impact on the issues as, they, as we see them um, arising. How many members do you have in this ministry? 
Well, uh, roughly. It grew this week, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. With the after ministry, the, after with the ministry, ministry fair, fair, we've had a lot who've expressed yeah. interest. Oh, really? So, yeah, we had almost uh, 100 folks that have expressed mm-hmm. interest in uh, participating. But our ministry probably consists of around active members. We probably have about 50 or so very active. Mm-hmm. Um, and in addition to that, you know, that's kind of the core group. Mm-hmm. Beyond that, we probably have closer to about, what, 200 Mm -hmm. that are aligned with the ministry, Mm -hmm. meaning that when we send out a call for, let's say, if we're needing to have a letter writing campaign, Mm -hmm. uh, they will tap into that and participate in that letter writing campaign. Mm -hmm. Or if we're having a rally, they may show up and be present at the rally that we're having. And all of, oh, go ahead. Take an opportunity, and I won't break the fourth wall. Yeah, no, it's fine. For a church that has over 12,000 members, yeah. most have a, a nose for social justice. It is an open invitation. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, absolutely. Um, I think that there are a lot of beautiful things that, that came out of the pandemic, and one of them is Zoom. So currently, you know, we make it available. We meet every third it's Thursday third on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I think that there there are a lot of people that that would be involved mm-hmm. if they saw how easy it was to get involved in yeah. the social justice ministry. Yeah. So for as ministries go, we we have a very strong core group of people that are active, especially for very a newer active. ministry. That's really good. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of people in this church that that should be in the social justice ministry. <laughs> so I know that there's a Wheeler Wherever member mm-hmm. who is actually active in the ministry, oh, right? Yeah. How does a that couple, work? Several. Since they're in a different city. Well, again, because we have different things that go on. Right. So, so when people think of social justice, a lot of times they think only of marching. Right. 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 They think of going out and protesting or being at rallies. That's one aspect. And we certainly um, appreciate presence because presence brings attention yes. to an issue and yes. awareness. So that's always very important. But again, we have other activities, uh, as we were talking about, that relate to advocacy and mm-hmm. how do we advocate mm-hmm. again. Some of that comes in a letter writing campaign. Mm-hmm. Some of that may come. What is that letter writing campaign? Well, it depends. Yeah. Uh, uh, for instance, as we were trying to stand against some of the legislation that was being put forth in the 87th uh, mm-hmm. special session mm-hmm. uh, relating to changes in the voting laws and changes in uh, th- what teachers could teach related to critical race theory, changes in laws around probation and mm-hmm. those kind of things, we would <clears throat> create letters that could be that individuals could send to their representatives. Okay. And uh, generally what we do at that time is we'll, we'll create sample letters and we'll uh, solicit folks to please, you know, uh, sign these letters, mm-hmm. send them out. And in, in, in that particular instance, one of those instances, Reverend Odom actually hand delivered oh, nice. over 100 letters uh, when we went down to Austin, because we we sometimes go to Austin, visit with our legislators, try to have mm-hmm. conversations with them about what's going on. We have members, uh, not only ourselves, but members within our group who testify. Mm-hmm. Um, some of that testimony can be done online. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to be present mm-hmm. to give your testimony. So that's how it, we can, you know, it, particularly those members who are in Texas, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're invited to participate in all of those kind of ways. Yeah. And so you meet every month. What are these meetings? What's, in, what's discussed in these meetings? Well, typically our monthly meetings, we will have a guest. Okay. Um, depending on the topic, it may be uh, in February, in February, in February, our guest will be uh, Dr. House, the HISD superintendent. Okay, and so that focus, in of course, is going to be on education. Mm-hmm. So each month we kind of highlight one of those subcommittee or okay. um, our, our strategic focus areas, and we'll have someone come in and share with the committee on that topic. Okay, um, they're usually very informative, um, extremely. Um, I don't know, motivational, I say, I don't know. Yeah, and I think often it's, um, we, we're we very timely, depending on like what's going on. Yeah, For example, with important. voting, yeah. I have a um, sister, Pam Gaskin, mm-hmm. who is actually a member of this church, but who is a, a voting warrior and advocate mm-hmm. and had a lot of national exposure the last mm-hmm. couple of years, is essentially an aunt to me. Like she helped raise me. Mm-hmm. Le- so, League of Women Voters. League of Women Voters. She has been involved um, in so many things and, She's come on going back to the 2020 election just Mm -hmm. to break down every aspect of 
how to vote by mail, mm -hmm. what they're trying to do okay. to make things confusing. So yeah. we actually had a 101, you know, after they made all these changes in the last Texas legislature to make it legislature to make it harder to vote. She came in and said, OK, this is why they're doing this. This is what you need to look out for. This is what I ran into. Um, we've had Chris Hollins, who is now running for mayor, but at the time was the Harris County clerk. Mm -hmm. And so we, you know, while he's being interviewed nationally, he was kind enough to come on um, and be visible and, and vocal and available. We've had Dr. James Dixon of NAACP has come on, Sheila Jackson Lee, who is literally a friend of the ministry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, she comes in any time. Yeah. Yes, she, exactly. She does. Um, and so, so typically we'll have, we'll have um, you know, we'll, we'll interview someone mm -hmm. and give people an opportunity. And we also will ask what the difference is as a social justice ministry. Okay. We're different from regular activists and, and, and advocates in that I always say that God is the, is the real leader of the social justice Speak ministry. To it. So we will ask, I often will try to at least close or ask questions about how a person's faith mm -hmm. moves them. I remember we had um, Sean Therry, who is a friend as well, is a, a state representative. Um, you know, and she teared up whenever we, mm. when, when it comes to, when, it, when we bring it to that, mm. we've heard some testimony about how their faith has, how God has gotten them through, you know, the struggles of being a politician or being in public service. Wow. And how so, would you answer that question yourself? Well, for, for me, you know, it was a spiritual awakening that I had mm -hmm. um, that started with my personal story, the story of Flandreau Castile. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, you know, I can go back. I remember... Mm -hmm. when, um, you know, I, I, I can go back to L.A. riots and I've always had kind of a militant um, bone. Mm -hmm. But there was something about watching this person, an educator, um, be shot with a child behind him yeah. and his girlfriend filming it and yeah. to watch. Yeah. And, it, and, and, and then I always share this. Of course, as black people, we want cops to stop killing mm -hmm. unarmed black people. Mm -hmm. But the outrage was in the fact that that was not enough to convict him. And that's why I always right. share yeah. is there are bad apples, right? But for them not to prosecute that person, yeah. there was something that, you know, combined with the, the administration that was in charge at that point, And then it was that month. Then we had the shooting in Dallas where the brother started shooting cops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even though they could take the white guy that shot up a church, yeah to jail alive and stop for food. I was about to say, buy and burn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And that they, right. they, the shooter in, right. in Colorado that, that, that shot up a movie theater during the Batman premiere, yeah. they got him alive and took him to jail so he could stand trial. They sent a robot to kill that brother. Yeah. Um, and, and so that, it changed me at some level at that point. Um, and then for me, I'm a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. In 2017, I was diagnosed with cancer that same year. Um, and it was a call, it was a call to ministry, and it was, a, it was a specific and direct call to come to this church. And so I started to see that this was bigger than me, that God was calling me to do something. Um, and so, it, you know, it culminated in, 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 in Pastor and Reverend AJ, mm -hmm. they, they requested me to be on Zoom and they asked if I was interested in leading, you know, restarting it. Mm -hmm. And I love Pastor to tell the story. I said yes before he could, before the words got completely out of his mouth, because I knew, you know, that it was something, it was, it was where, where God was calling me to be. Um, and so I tried to, to me, if I'm living the, the right way, mm -hmm. I'm asking God before I make moves. Mm -hmm. So we pray mm -hmm. before we start every meeting. Mm -hmm. We pray before we have a planning session. Mm -hmm. um, we read scripture, you know, so it is very much a Christian biblical ministry that does social justice work that. as opposed to just being activists. And, and even, I, I would say for all of us that justice work is mm -hmm. part of all of our Christian discipleship. Mm -hmm. 
I, I believe that God has called Don't all of us. Gyms today. <laughs> My goodness. Well, I, you know, when we when we look at the scripture and we look at the ministry of Christ, mm -hmm. um, especially as He declares in Luke chapter four, uh, the things that He's talking about, uh, breaking, uh, uh, you know, freeing those who are captive, releasing those from oppression, um, uh, declaring good news to the poor, mm -hmm. uh, and declaring that this is a year of the Lord's favor. That's an economic restoration. So when we look at all of those things and understand the impetus of what the kingdom of heaven is, mm -hmm. the kingdom of heaven is ushering God's justice in the world, ushering God's mercy and compassion in mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. So as we do this work, it's not so much about my right, your right. It is about how do we bring and usher in the kingdom of God so that all of God's people can live in harmony. Mm -hmm. All of God's people can live in peace. All of us can live into this hope and this future mm -hmm. that God has for us mm -hmm. without being impeded by hate and resentment and power struggles. Mm -hmm. The beloved um, community. Yeah. So mm -hmm. as we're so as we do this work, we do it with a foundation and a fixation toward love. Mm -hmm. So that love can be expressed freely within a community. Mm -hmm. um, and so that uh, everyone again has that right to to achieve the, the 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 prosperity and the goodness that God desires for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. That was inspirational. I hope you guys recorded that. It was really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's dive a little bit deeper into the work that you've done. What is something that you are most proud of? A project in the past that you were most proud of? Well I think that I, I think we're probably most proud of in the midst of the pandemic being shut down that we were able to put forth our first summit. We did mm. our uh, our social justice forum, um, what was, was it? Justice Rising. Justice Rising, thank you. Justice Rising, dismantling, um, um, it, what is it? Dismantling systemic injustice. Dismantling systemic injustice, mm -hmm. justice rising. But um, to do Parent, that- Parenthetically, we, we were picking a name. We, we were tasked with <laughs> brainstorming for a name of this summit. And so we had everyone in the ministry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we were sitting there and I was like, I got it. She was just like, no, I got it. Yeah. And I said, Justice Rising. She said, that's what I came up with. Oh, yeah, wow. we had it. And so, the spirit. <laughs> yeah. We, and um, so we, we, we did that conference in the midst of a pandemic. We'd never done a conference mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. and uh, it was church wide and it was actually, you know, we tried to be uh, generational, mm -hmm. intergenerational. Mm -hmm. So not only were there things for the adults, but there were also things that were going on uh, for the students. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud of that. Very mm -hmm. proud of the opportunity to have um, people within the community as well as within our congregation mm -hmm. um, hear perspectives of what was going on within the city with mm -hmm. policing, hear perspectives of what was going on with our legislators, um, and um, had a wonderful keynote speaker with Senator Ralph Warnock. Um, and and it was it was just one of those things that we were that was one thing. And I would also say just the work that we've done this past year, mm -hmm. even um, getting ready for the election. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really kind of a Herculean effort on our voter engagement committee. They had folks out registering to uh, registering folks to vote almost every week mm -hmm. um, at the libraries uh, all around town. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to on campus here, um, workshops. We, it was it was an incredible effort this past year of getting out the vote and uh, really trying to encourage folks to vote. So I, I would yeah. say those are. And you know, I, I, I think she's being a little modest about the the event. It was a it was a big it was a two day it was Friday night Saturday morning. Um, Reverend AJ hosted a police a policing nice. forum mm -hmm. with. Um, a senior official uh, from HPD and also the sh was a constable or sheriff's constables constables office and then a brother from Black Lives Matter and mm -hmm. it, you know it was a very real engaging conversation then we had brother Chris Hollins with Pastor Cosby came on the next day and then we had uh, Senator Warnock and and just to see both what we can do and also see what the, the credibility that we have as Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, you know, for, for one phone call from pastor to get, at the time, you know, Senator Raphael Warnock yeah. to give this keynote. It was powerful. Um, and it just, it was, it was kind of, a, to me, it was a lens into what the ministry can become and do. Um, 
I'll also, I was also really proud of what we were able to do when this Texas legislature that came in that did all these, you know, this fake narrative mm -hmm. that there's so much fraud, there's so much election fraud, especially mm -hmm. where there are where a lot of actually, black and brown no. people, especially mm -hmm. in Houston, especially in Harris County. So we need to change these laws and make it harder to vote, mm -hmm. even though it's already the hardest state in the vote in the country to vote in. Um, the Democrats in that Congress decided to leave mm -hmm. and to go to Washington, D.C., just to do something to impede this unjust legislation. That's when we started this letter writing campaign because the Republicans that were still there were still having the legislature, even though there was no quorum, mm -hmm. and they were, you know, having these in token sessions. We listening, wrote these letters. Listening sessions. Listening sessions, so to speak. Yes. Angela went to DC. She went to DC to be with these these politicians, which really in, in a lot of ways, you know, put the ministry on the map. Mm. Um, and then at the same time, we were going to these sessions, even though they were not going to, you know, to pass any votes, mm. because every person has a right to go up and, you know, state their case. Mm -hmm. And so I brought those letters in a briefcase onto the Senate floor. And I know that that day they were not expecting to hear the truth. And uh, this was on critical race theory, you know, and it was, you know, we already can't trust you. Mm -hmm. You gave us an edited version of the Bible mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. um, you know, this is, this is what communists do, but I did it all in the name of God. Right. I said a prayer. <laughs> uh, I came with a Bible, you know, and so. Just be true, man. Right. <laughs> and and you know, stop me when I'm lying. You yeah. know, but I think that right. it was something, again, it was another lens into the fact that they responded differently to, you know, a man of God, to mm -hmm. someone that is um, supposedly, they're all supposed to be Christians as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's what gives us... Give them grace. We got to give them grace. You know, I, I, but <laughs> right. I'm of the opinion. Right. We were talking about being biblical and, and what... Jesus was woke. Like, that's Absolutely. what I need to put out there. Absolutely. You know, Jesus is... Absolutely. Most of his nine to five outside of healing was in front of, at the temple, you know, not to the side. He would go to the temple and teach as was his custom. Mm -hmm. And they were constantly trying to embarrass him, mm -hmm. discredit him, humiliate him. They bring this woman in that is caught in the act of adultery, even mm -hmm. though they didn't bring the man. They just brought the one person. Yeah. Well, we, we can speak to that some other time. But <laughs> they were attempting to get him to, to be, to, to counteract the laws of Moses. Well, mm -hmm. what he was able to do was, you know, kind of tranquilize them with the truth. Mm -hmm and show people, you know, don't listen to them. Yes, I mean, don't do what they say, but not what they do. Mm -hmm. And so the law is righteous and just, but mm -hmm. he was always there to say, church people, you know, God honors righteousness more than sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And so obedience. Yeah. I think that that is a part of the scope of our ministry as well, is to say to other Christians, where's the Christianity in that? You know, yeah. how can we endorse this person and it's um you know and so it, it also is about doing things that are not the most comfortable mm -hmm. you know john lewis who's who's an idol of the ministry of mm -hmm. the pastor of the church you know it's getting into good trouble and and that's what our pastor did mm -hmm. he was not supposed to let martin luther king preach yeah the, you know, every church was supposed to ban him from preaching. Not right. only did he let him preach, he let him stay in his home and he drove him through Third Ward, you know, to help him raise money. Yeah. So that's where we come from um, as a church. And that's where we want to continue it in the so ministry. Important. Thank you so much. That's all the time that we have for today. I wish I could just sit here and talk to you so much more longer. But we're done for the day. Um, tell me your social media handles. Where can everyone find you? Well, we are on all all uh, aspects of social media. We're on Facebook, uh, on Instagram, on uh, Twitter, mm -hmm. and we have handles on all of those things. Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church Social Justice Ministry on Facebook. On Facebook. Okay. WABC Social Justice okay. yes, on Instagram. Instagram. Okay. And I think Twitter is the same. I think it's the same awesome. WABC Social Justice. Social Justice, yeah. And we meet on the third Thursday of each month, and you third can register Thursday. on the events page on the church website. Can we? Also, yeah. Also, there's a QR code. Okay. That if uh, you want to connect with us, you can use that QR code okay. and um, give us your information and we'll be sure to send you out all of the um, emails and information that we have uh, within the ministry as they go. 
make sure y'all join the social justice ministry. They're doing yes. really good things, guys. This is so important. Yes. And make sure you so watch much. On the Avenue. Make sure you watch On the, on the Avenue, avenue with this amazing that new good. host. That was good. Thank you so, so much. much. Thank All you. Right. Thank you.